Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, believe that um, is my session next uh, in order to uh, uh, take you guys along with these sessions. Um, I do have uh, quick presentations uh, to walk you through in terms of the, uh, the landscape um, of the two countries that um, are part of under my responsibility. Just uh, briefly about myself, I've uh, been working in, uh, with Nielsen for uh, 20, over 20 years and uh, looking after the, uh, the research in terms of media. Um, so today um, I have uh, only a couple of minutes uh, with Ricardo as well to do a quick presentation uh, and hoping that um, this deck will have some sort of a benefits or uh, useful to you guys over here. So let's start um, about Thailand. The reason I bring over Thailand is because uh, obviously Thailand is part of the Indochina and uh, uh, in terms of Thailand has made sort of a the progress in terms of the um, the researcher and also the uh, uh, in terms of the televisions, the content. So I believe that uh, the rest of the uh, the countries in around this region will follow this kind of path in in Thailand. Um, let's go to the uh, the TV channels. Um, at the moment, we have over 600 channels uh, with the uh, digital TV uh, of 22. Uh, channels, of course, uh, number of 19s there, two is already drops out from the uh, bankruptcy. Uh, so it's uh, after two years after the uh, the whole thing started. Uh, sharing with you in terms of the uh, the Viva populations, uh, in terms of television, you see that uh, majority of the uh, viewers they are over 50 years old, and the um, the the, the millennial or those uh, Gen Y, of course, they turn around watch. Uh, the contents from other devices. Uh, in terms of the average viewing uh, in Thailand, it's about four hours and 18 minutes. Uh, the prime time starts pretty early, from 6.30 to 10.30. And obviously, the, um, the region and the, uh, the country has bro uh, broken down into three parts, uh, Bangkok or greater Bangkok and upcountry urban and upcountry rural where obviously the rural contains the uh, majority of the, uh, the audiences. This is the, uh, to show you, to share you with the, uh, the top uh, drama and, and sports and the, uh, that being a view and the share of the uh, genre that uh, occur occurring in Thailand, uh, 24 hours of course. Uh, the first one of the drama serials, um, obviously the, uh, from the local by 71%, from the Korea, 14%, Chinese, 6%, and the rest, uh, the Japanese and the, the Westerns. Uh, I believe this is the, um, uh, the similar kind of the um, uh, path that uh, Myanmar, Vietnam, and the rest of this Indochina will follow. Um, and and uh, it'd be very interesting to, to see um, that Thailand has got the, this area that uh, gets started where Thai dramas become the biggest. In terms of the, uh, the money, uh, the media spend that going into uh, Thai advertising um, is over two billion. Uh, last year, it's over five or three billion US dollars. Um, you can see that uh, from the last three years, where the digital has started uh, from year 14, um, the, the chunk of uh, the money that's gone into televisions is quite huge. Uh, is over 65%. Um, in, in this year, of course, um, the, this is the forecast year to date up to September, is already 2.5 billion. In the area of uh, the internet, uh, the very, very dramatic kind of uh, growth, over 100%, uh, as you can see from the internet world. Now, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the digital world, which is, uh, has gone very, very fast. Um, follow up the, uh, the US and also the, the Europe. Um, Thailand has got a very uh, aggressive kind of uh, using the, the, the other kind of uh, device or uh, digital for the consumer. The last uh, three years, the internet has gone up quite dramatically, up to 45%, but still 
is still growing very fast. Uh, different from the US has gone up to 85% and the Europe. So in this particular area, the, uh, the digital has grown quite pretty fast. Um, we're talking about the, um, how do we measure the, uh, the digital content. And this is the one that uh, I'm sharing with you and is coming to this region, uh, starting off from Thailand, where we're going to use this kind of uh, solution for everyone to do the tradings. Um, so what we're going to do is measure all of the uh, contents by all devices, uh, computer, tablets, mobile, and PC. And uh, with digital content, uh, you can get out of it is, of course, the, uh, the strategize and how to uh, uh, plan your content um, to deliver desired audience, and also using it for monetization and also to compete. Uh, so this is uh, coming down to this region very soon. This is just to share with you uh, the, the evidence from the US. This is, uh, is really going out in the market where the digital measurements are already happening over there. So from, from this slide, you can see that um, on the website air, uh, where we uh, monitor the reach of uh, the audiences and uh, from the tablets and, of course, the mobile. Uh, the total reach of the audience is about 2.75, but, of course, uh, from the two devices, there are duplications of the audiences. So we deduplicate de de 0.16 out, so you see the, the net kind of a... 2.59 is the, uh, the audience reach. So this is the one that uh, you can really look at the actual viewing of the audiences over the uh, two devices. And um, last but not least is about the, uh, uh, the genre, the, the serial that uh, capture the audience. Um, uh, in the US, of course, it's different from the other uh, region uh, around the world, which is the, uh, the female, female kind of uh, viewing the content over the tablets more than the uh, mobile phone. We are believe that in this region, uh, mobile phone will overtake the tablets. So let's see in the future. Okay, a little bit on the thought leadership. This is gonna be a very interesting one. Um, it's about the aging society. Um, in this particular area, showing that, um, of course, Japan has got the uh, lots of senior people around. But if you're talking about Indochina, lots of young people. And you can see in Myanmar, in Vietnam, uh, still lots of young uh, audiences. So it means that any at all, anything at all to do with the contents, uh, majority of the audiences will be young people. So uh, this is gonna be a good lead to um, the investors, also the broadcasters, and the content provider as well. This is just from the Thailand, so I'll just skip um, over that chart. Uh, back to Myanmar, um, uh, it's about the um, area that's uh, going to really come up pretty uh, fast in terms of the growth, and the, uh, in terms of the uh, TV Myanmar, the riches of the audiences is over 70%. Uh, where TV ratings is really, really um, going across uh, the last six months uh, in terms of the audience, about 15% uh, average within uh, 15 quarter an hour or 15 minutes. Uh, the curve, all the trends of the TV ratings is similar to uh, the country in this region. Of course, the prime time starts um, uh, around 6, 6.30, similar to Thailand, and it drops around uh, 10.30s. And this is another one that uh, showing you that uh, similar to Thailand as well, where the majority of the audiences, they are over 50 years old. And uh, of course, the, uh, in the prime time, you can see that uh, young people uh, has dominant that particular times, which, is, uh, which are the children's. This is the, uh, the aspen, the money that's gone into uh, Myanmar from uh, 2010 up to date. Uh, you can see the, uh, the frozen in 2015 down to zero. Uh, that is subject to the, um, 
the government has changed the currencies and uh, the exchange rate has dropped. So uh, that's causing the impact. Uh, but in 2016, the, the advertising money is picking up, but it's not as double-digit as those uh, old days where the investor came in. A uh, majority of the money gone into the two top channels, of course, the uh, MRTV4 and the uh, Channel 7. In terms of the, um, um, the money that's being spent on televisions, of course, uh, most of them... Uh, being spent on the FMCG and the um, and the communication area as well. Now, how to reach the uh, Myanmar consumer? Um, obviously, the television still uh, dominant, uh, over 60, 56 percent. Um, followed by radio, 41 percent. Newspaper, 23. Um, magazine, six. Where the internet, as you can see, is only 15 percent but it's growing fast. Um, so this is another area that interesting is the video. 70%. This is the one that uh, Myanmar people sort of are, uh, hire the, the disc and the video and watch those kind of contents. Uh, but it's changing. It's changing uh, quite fast in terms of uh, free TV or televisions. This is just the East Top, the Myanmar TV, and uh, most of the genre, they have uh, diversity and differences. Um, obviously, the, uh, the sporting uh, being shared by three stations. Uh, the rest, they have their own kind of uh, uh, ability to, to uh, create their own uh, productions as well, uh, as well as the um, overseas contents. Um, I just run through this uh, fast in terms of business in environment, which you might have known already, that uh, the top five country that's spending money in Myanmar, of course, the, uh, the China, and followed by the Singaporean, 24%. The rest coming from Hong Kong, you, uh, Korea, and Thailand, and the others. Uh, the top five sectors are the, uh, the oil and gas, and the, uh, the power, and then followed by the... Um, um, the, 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 the real estates and manufacturers. This is the, uh, the foreign direct investments. Um, in terms of, terms of the GDP, um, uh, looking pretty good in terms of the uh, double digit growth um, from the Myanmar. And uh, this is showing you that the money has gone into the country quite a lot. Last uh, chart for me, this is, uh, as I mentioned, about the uh, aging population. Uh, for Myanmar, still lots of opportunity for the content to be produced for the young uh, dependents, which contain of 37.5%. Um, and then followed by the young dependent, um, you know, around 30 to uh, 40. So this is the, uh, the takeaway for you or any content providers uh, for this particular region, uh, the country where the content's probably suitable for those youngsters that's uh, coming up. And uh, that's all from me, um, Nielsen. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so I will try to talk over mainly three points. Uh, one of the points is to understand a little bit uh, what is happening in terms of trends, uh, people uh, watching television. Another one will be talking a little bit about the media investment because, of course, if we are uh, checking what to produce, we want to understand where the money is going to be put. And the last, uh, we'll talk a little bit of what kind of content is working, especially in Cambodia and Vietnam, and well, basically in most of Southeast Asia. So um, the first point is, as we know, uh, there's a lot of changes happening now in the market, but something very important, all these changes ha have been happening for a long time now, uh, but right now everything is moving very fast. It's, it's moving very fast, and countries like Cambodia and Vietnam uh, that is a very young generation, we can expect that they will move very fast. So 
This, especially for content providers and broadcasters, is becoming a big challenge. A good example of what is happening on Vietnam, uh, we can see that the traditional format of television, uh, people watch less in the traditional format, but they are still watching the TV program in other formats, for example, in the, in the phones or in their own computers or the iPads that I already mentioned. Something similar that is happening with the print media and the radio, the, the traditional way is not working anymore. People are moving to other uh, way of consuming these formats. In Cambodia, basically we can see from a progress over three years is very slow. So, so Cambodia, uh, the movement will be much slower than, than Vietnam, but you can see the part of digital is growing and we will expect that it grows very fast in the next years, okay? About what is happening with the brands. The brands are still investing the money worldwide in television and in digital. Here you can see the trend that, that the expectations for 2017 is television should continue increasing in terms of media investment and also online. So, so are the two major channels and online, it means basically on YouTube. Uh, what happened a little different in Vietnam and Cambodia than this is a trend that we can see worldwide 90% of the investment still is going to television. Okay. So I think uh, as a producer, it's, it's a little bit uh, time to change on what kind of content produced for television. No? Uh, now brands and agencies and everybody is talking a different language. We're talking about total video. No? So clients are we already see that the brands are thinking on total video. I think uh, Measurement Nielsen already talked about it. They are uh, looking how to measure total video, and Cantar Media is looking the same way. So, so this is just a good example of one program in the UK. You can see like around 47% was only live uh, rating, but then uh, some people watch it later, some people wa watch it between the week, and some people watch it between the month. So, so all the brands and the consumers are, are changing, and this is how everybody's trying to change right now, okay? Uh, about content, I, I just want to show this chart because I think it's happening in most of the cases. In terms of uh, Vietnam and Cambodia, and most of the Southeast Asia countries, we see the top programs of 2015. All of them will be Asian programs. So, so we know that content, the, the amount of content export from worldwide, usually 85 will come from the UK and from the US. And in Asia, it's not produced so much. But if we see the trends of what is happening in Asia, it's very interesting because the top programs that people are watching are uh, with, with Asian content. And for example, in Cambodia, uh, we, 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 I just checked before coming here, the trend last year was four Thai programs, and this year so far, one Cambodian uh, program is in the top four. So, so it's very important to understand that while well, Asia has 60% of the population and very low production, uh, and the content that Asian people are willing to watch is Asian content. So, well, uh, I think uh, right now we're becoming like the golden age of television. We have heard that. And I think, well, right now is, we have heard a lot of times that, that the king is the content. And I think very soon, if you are just a pound, you, you will not be able to do business over here, no? Because people are watching for the content and they have many options. So these are just some key things or, or, or where do you should focus. So I think now we will go to the Q&A. Okay, um, let's um, go to the, um, I think, Q&A session uh, with the panelists. I think you probably um, have those panelists already introduced and the name. Um, the, the first one that I would like to ask um, is about the, for the researcher like us, uh, Ricardo, uh, in terms of the, what do you expect um, from the researcher on the emerging market like Cambodia and Laos? Um, what do you expect from the researcher like us? Any one, maybe, Tim? <laughs> well, we look at the ratings all the time and sometimes we scratch our heads <laughs> and say, are these numbers right? These can't be right. <laughs> um, we're looking, you know, in our market, we're 
50% of the population is under the age 24. So it's very young and um, we're always looking for the information that will help us uh, guide because of that, because of the youth. Um, also, we're looking for uh, the markets outside of Phnom Penh. 1.7 million people live in Phnom Penh, but the country has 16 million people. So sometimes we get in our mindset of our Phnom Penh mindset, and we, you know, we have to keep in mind that, you know, what are the people in the village watching? So we're looking for that type of information. So, um, any comments on that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like to add something. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Laos. Laos has a small population, only 6.5 million of population, and they understand Thai. But uh, the Thai, Thai Isan, can also understand Lao, yeah, more than 20 million. But for the market, uh, the television market or the entertainment market, when compared in the neighboring country, in other country, the neighboring country is small. But I think now, you know, the Thai uh, company yeah, get the profit for, for, for Lao. They, they provide the uh, DTH, for example, DTH, more, more than so many, yeah, more, more than 100,000 DTH uh, from Thai to, to import to Laos. And so for subscriber, as I know now, uh, about five, 500,000 mm -hmm. subscriber. So they get, uh, they get the benefit, they get the income from Lao people. But the most important, uh, that, uh, we would like to improve the content because uh, Laos has also beautiful nature and uh, also tradition, yeah? We have uh, uh, 20, uh, 49 ethnic group. If we produce uh, the good quality of the uh, program, we can also sell to, to Thai, sure. to Thai area or to uh, another country, sure. country yeah. Thank you. And, and um, any kind of uh, special request that you would like us researcher to do for uh, for you? No, I for I, I don't I don't uh, understand what what you mean. Uh, uh, um, may I speak in the the, the, the local yeah, language yeah, because so my understand. English is not. Ah, this if if it's the director of the station, he wants to help the people who are working in the Oh, no, no, we have no rating now. Yeah. Okay. No rating. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay, so he's already got uh, the, the data, right? Over to you, uh, Ricardo. Um, we we talked a little bit about uh, consumers are changing, while well, the audience is changing, and uh, what they like today, probably they would not like next year or in two years. So uh, as an agency in terms of planning and as a broadcaster, how are you getting prepared to this? Uh, because this evolution is, is moving too fast. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hang from SCTV, uh, which is Saigon Tourist Cable Television, the largest pay TV operator based in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Um, so Ricardo's question is about the changing uh, con consumers' preferences. Um, okay, I, um, I would answer that in the perspective of the prominent pay TV uh, operators in Vietnam. Um, as a pay TV operator, we know for sure that if we keep doing the business the way we did uh, like five years ago, we would no longer uh, sustain and survive in this business um, because customers have a lot of choices and a lot of device and a lot of ways to, um, to consume content. So uh, um, in the past two to three years, SCTV has been very aggressive in moving into the multi-service provider, not just the traditional pay TV service, 
but we also incorporate uh, internet broadband, um, voice over IP and um, VOD, uh, 4K and several service incorporated in one um, cable into the household. So the reason being that we understand that the customer now wanting one-stop shop for many services, they don't want to have one um, traditional pay TV provider and another internet service provider and another VOD service provider, etc. So we are able to do multiple service um, to our existing and new uh, subscri subscribers. Um, that's one. And also in terms of um, the viewing habit now, moving into you know anytime, anywhere, um, people want their content to be anytime, anywhere, not just in their living room. Um, we've been actively uh, introducing new services such as the um, SCTV VOD, SCTV online apps that you can uh, download. Um, and also, um, we are experimenting. The first pay TV in Vietnam that is experimenting successfully the uh, 4K and um, um, and, and other services. Um, in terms of content, this is the interesting part. Um, SCTV has been known in the country for being um, of a strong content provider. And um, we have a lineup of 21 channels produced and managed by ourselves, um, of which 11 are produced wholly in-house by our team. So we produce in-house and we um, license a lot of international content to cater to a very diverse and, um, and sophisticated demand for content from our client. So all in all, in all the aspects of the business, we are very much aware of and uh, increasingly um, strive ourselves to meet the demand of the changing customers' uh, behavior and habit. Uh, perhaps other panelists may add more. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're, we're en route to um, an OTT solution where uh, through our telco where we have a platform where everybody can uh, subscribe monthly and then just get everything from that one subscription. Get your mo download your songs, your music videos, watch your TV shows, watch your sports. We're also we're racing to get that in place because it's happening so quickly. Okay, um, I have the next uh, question. This is about <clears throat> uh, the money. Of course, um, <clears throat> maybe uh, the ad agency perhaps uh, best to answer this. Um, in in terms of uh, Myanmar, the um, the ad spend or the money that going to advertising, do you think um, the av advertisers will still um, pouring in the big budgets for TV, or they would divert divert uh, some of the money to somewhere else? In Myanmar market, advertisers will continue using TV. TV is the main medium in Myanmar. It will be the um, the most dominant medium for a while because um, as many of you know that Myanmar is going on a, a several changes uh, um, so that the infrastructure is developing and also every sector facing all the changes and of course that we um, digital is there digital uh, movement we have seen in this quarter so that the when while TV is going on, digital is following up. So the when we talk about spending, digital um, may not um, uh, be the same level as TV in the next definitely two years. Um, but you, um, my focus is that. Next year, 2017, digital will be number two medium in Myanmar market. And um, this year, compared to the 2016, uh, 2015, um, it's about five to seven percent increase 
in the reported mediums. And there, um, Nelson um, cover TV, outdoor, print. And the area that Nelson hasn't covered is radio. And there are a lot of money in outdoor as, uh, radio as well. And when we are um, spending in that um, radio, TV, and now advertisers started using their budget in digital. And um, um, next year, when we're doing the preparation, preparation for next year, we got to allocate budget in digital as well. Thank you. This is very interesting where you're saying that uh, <clears throat> digital will become the second biggest uh, in the next couple of years, yeah? Yes. Okay. Over to you, Ricardo. Uh, okay, about uh, content. I think a lot of people here would like to understand from your personal point of view, what is the, the interest uh, or what kind of content you are looking for the next year that will be successful in each of your countries. I don't know, we can probably begin with Laos. For Lao television, Lao TV program, especially for our television, yeah, we have uh, Lao National Television has two channels. Uh, one channel uh, is focused for entertainment, for the, uh, so the content that uh, the consumer need to see now is uh, the, game, the game show, game show. Game show. And uh, I think the first, the first game show, and also the TV series from produced from Laos, because uh, we have we have the uh, series, but uh, from from foreign country, from uh, China, from Vietnam, and from I think from uh, Korea, but uh, the Lao people uh, want to see Lao. Silly, but they can, they cannot, they cannot, they, they have no chance to see because for the yeah. investment and so we have the disadvantage for the income from the advertising, you know, for make sure from uh, the company in Laos is very small. I think if we, if we improve the content, uh, uh, I, as I, 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 th I told before, you know, the Isan people from Thai also sure. they understand, and we can also uh, buy, you know, for yeah. for the other yeah. country. It is uh, we need we need the game show yeah. now, and it is very important. If if the the foreign kind of content, uh, they must be dubbed or uh, subtitled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dub, dubbing in Lao. Dubbing yeah. in Lao. Yeah. But I mean, for, for Laos to access Thai, yes, yes, it's yes. easier we, because we, we, we speak want the also same language. Because now the Lao people in Lao, we can see more than 50 channels, you know, sure. from foreigners, you know. They can get, uh, you know, they can get the program from foreigners. But for, for our side, you know, we need also improve our program, you know, for our people and also for the other people, you know, right. for the foreign. But because as I said, you know, before we have many, you know, food. We have food. We have tradition. We have custom. Mm -hmm. We have many, many things to do. If if we we do well, we do best, uh, and we can also sure, yeah, get money from the content <laughs> from the program. <laughs> so maybe um, I give a quick. Um, it seems that we are the only production house here in this panel. So yeah. I'd like to share a little bit about, um, my name is Big Hank, I'm from Vietnam. Uh, every year we produce about 800 hours of TV uh, content, including game shows, reality shows, drama series. And um, I have never seen Vietnam has changing. Vietnam is a very fast developing country, as you see. Um, in, uh, as one of the research that um, Kanta shared here, I have never seen um, Vietnam today is like 20 years ago for TV. 
TV started 20 years ago when, you know, we started with import all the foreign contents from a series from China, um, Korea, and then it comes into the, maybe Laos will be the same, it comes into game shows. So we produce a lot of game shows, not so expensive, uh, local content, and the local audience can see the, the, you know, related. And then too many game shows. And then we comes into local drama series. We have more budget, we produce local drama series. Um, too many drama series, <laughs> because the problem in Vietnam is that when a new trend is coming up, everybody follows. Yeah. All the TV station, all the production house. Mm. So audience get fed up very fast. Mm. So it developed very fast, but it go down very fast as well. Sure. So uh, after local drama series, too many local drama series. I mean, still game show, drama series, foreign content are still there, but it reduced dramatically. And then it go to reality shows. So we produce a lot of idols, got talents, master chef, mm -hmm. you know, The Voice, all these big shows. And then on the TV channels like VTV, right, you see all the biggest shows, Ida and The Voice next to each other on the mm. same night. Mm. And then for about four or five years, audience get so fed up of reality shows. So now, we don't know where to go. Mm. Um, so, you know, format owners or content providers, Vietnam is looking for something, next big thing. We don't know what's going to... Yeah. So you can propose what... So now, after reality shows, really... We don't know what, and then, but it seems that all the different content are saluted. Mm. The market is, you know, get bought. Mm. Um, it might go back to the old day where the highest rating shows are actually drama series from India. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, going to be uh, kind of a reverse psychology as well. But uh, for the content providers, uh, I think the, the most of the... Uh, the broadcasters in this region, they're looking for the format, the new format that's coming in. Um, <clears throat> something like that hit the market, like the, uh, the, the God Talent or The Voice, uh, something that the format that they can uh, adapt to their kind of uh, local uh, environment. Yeah? Yeah. Um, in, in we have one sorry. more question? Yes, uh, <laughs> got two I minutes. Would Okay, I would um, add more to Ms. Uh, Ms. Hain's comments that, um, uh, as you know, Vietnam is um, one of the largest format importer in the whole of Asia, um, even in terms of variety of uh, sub-genre, sub-category, and in terms of the number of format we've been acquired in the past um, two to three years. Um, that's a lot. Um, you name, you name the new up and, and, and hard format and Vietnam is having it on air or somebody has already acquired for the um, near future airing. So, um, and we think that for the next two to three years time, uh, the, the format market in Vietnam would remain very strong. Um, but um, there might be some changes in the way that um, some of the very hard and trendy format elsewhere um, may not be sustaining in Vietnam, meaning that it may be very hard for the first season, but um, it cooled down a lot in the second, or uh, it may be completely disappear um, and no, long, no longer on air for the third one. Um, but um, besides that, there's the other formats that are very long running and sustainable even it's not so hot and trendy elsewhere in the region. So that is in terms of the format. And in terms of dramas, um, Vietnam has also been uh, very um, active in uh, licensing dramas, uh, mostly in, the, in Asia, um, from the Asia countries as the re re research shows. Um, but Vietnamese um, viewers have been uh, more and more adaptive to a variety of drama sources, not um, also from Asian, but also can be from Latin America, um, Turkey, and a few others. So people are willing to, to try, broadcasters are willing to try, and viewers also um, more open to other um, sources of content. And, um, as the research, the research also shows, sports come the third, 
uh, in terms of the most popular contents and sports being the most, um, the single most popular, um, uh, football being the most popular contents in Vietnam would remain very strong. And we have almost all the major championships, um, uh, international as well as the regional um, championships. So those are um, the three top um, contents that we will continue um, to be um, a prominent importer in the region. Great. Uh, I think we're about to run out of time. Um, perhaps uh, one last question for uh, maybe Cambodia. Um, in, in Cambodia, team, do you think um, uh, we're going to have a big demand in terms of the uh, overseas content or locally? Yeah, currently in the market in Cambodia, um, uh, many shows are brought in and then they're just voice dubbed. Um, and they can do very well. Um, in the market, you know, we have The Voice uh, on our channel, the cable, uh, the Cambodian television network. We'll be bringing on MasterChef this year. We're currently producing an American format called Bet on Your Baby. So we buy the formats and then we localize them. Okay. And it's very popular. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, anything else, then, Ricardo? Uh, well, maybe last question. In terms of co production with other countries, uh, are you working on this? Uh, I think you gave some examples. Uh, this is happening on Vietnam, but I don't know the, the other countries uh, making co productions. Uh, we've done some co-productions, but you know it's pretty limited. Uh, for instance, it's like more like uh, celebrity sharing. You know, you bring your celebrity over here, we'll put it on our show. Uh, as far as full-on, uh, like bringing our producing team to another country to shoot on their set, uh, we, there's not in our market. We don't really have that happening right now. It's uh, when you run the numbers and the budget, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, I guess we run out of time. Um, I think that's all from us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.